star hopping in the September sky. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Fellow stargazer Marlene Hidalgo will join us to help you find your way around the sky. This week we're going to share a method for identifying stars in the northern and eastern sky after dark. It's called star hopping, and it's an easy way to go from a constellation you know to other constellations you don't know. Let's get hopping. Okay, we have our sky set up for after sunset any night this week facing north. Let's start off by finding a landmark in the sky. Do you see the Big Dipper? Yep, there it is, hanging in the northwest, looking like it's going to scoop us up. The Big Dipper is one of the easiest things to find the night sky, since it's so distinctive. And it's visible in the sky almost all year. Now, let's get star hopping. We're going to start by using the two stars on the end of the spoon of the Big Dipper, named Merak and Dube. Connect the dots on these two stars and continue that line up and to the right, and you'll run smack dab into a star of similar brightness. This is the most famous and important star in the sky, Polaris, a.k.a. the North Star. The North Star marks the end of the much fainter Little Dipper or Little Bear constellation, Ursa Minor. The entire Little Dipper is almost impossible to make out in a light polluted sky, but at least you know how to hop to it. Now we're going to make another hop. Go from Dube to Polaris and then continue that line to the next equally bright star called Calf. Calf is the star at the top of a W-shaped group of stars marking the queen named Cassiopeia. I know it's really tough to picture these stars as a queen, so just look for the W shape. I picture the stars as Queen Cassiopeia's crown. Ooh, I could see that. And did you notice that the hop we made from Dube to Polaris is the same length as the hop from Polaris to Calf? Aha! That makes it easy for you to tell that you're on the correct star. Now we've turned to face northeast. Polaris is over there, Calf and Cassiopeia are there. And if you continue this line between Polaris and Calf and keep going, it'll run you into another equally bright star. This one is called Alpharetz, and it's a corner of a great square of four stars that mark the body of Pegasus the Flying Horse. Yep, he's flying upside down. Once again, notice that the distance of each hop is the same, from Polaris to Calf and Calf to Alpharetz. So now you can start with something you know, the Big Dipper, and hop to find the Little Dipper, Cassiopeia, and Pegasus. Now, let's check out what the planets are doing next week. We're facing southwest, and it's now just after sunset on Sunday, September 8th. There, a slim crescent moon appears right next to a very, very bright star. That bright star isn't really a star, but it is actually the planet Venus. When we zoom into Venus, we can see that it is not a perfect circle. Venus goes through phases, and while the moon is a crescent, you can see a gibbous Venus in a telescope on Sunday. Up and to the left of the Moon and Venus, you'll spot a much dimmer star. This is no star either. It's the magnificent ringed planet Saturn. If you have trouble finding it in the twilight, just wait another 30 minutes for the skies to darken and it'll pop into view low in the west. If you're still having trouble, come back out on Monday night the 9th and the Moon will have shifted farther to the left and hopped over Saturn. Now Saturn will appear to the right of the waxing crescent Moon with Venus down lower. So, try some star hopping tonight. Hop from the Big Dipper, to the Little Dipper, to Cassiopeia, to Pegasus. And look for the moon hopping from Venus on September 8th over to Saturn on September 9th. Keep, Keep looking, looking up.